I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos, posting excellent remarks, and sharing with me some brilliant questions. In this video, I am going to discuss with you the technique of factoring degree 5 polynomial. This polynomial also has complex roots. The example is to factor the function f of x, which is equal to 2 to 2 times x to the power of 5 minus x to the power of 4 plus 10x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4, where x belongs to complex numbers. We'll actually understand a technique to factor this polynomial in the shortest way. We are going to learn a few more rules to do the same. In case you want to learn from me, you can always write to me on the email address given. Also, watch our website for the latest videos. Now, we are given here a degree 5 polynomial. Let's try to understand a strategy to factor this polynomial. Well, we know something, that is, the degree here is 5. It means what? That means that we have total number of 5 roots, right? So we are expecting total 5 roots. So roots are basically the x values, which will give zeros to the function. We are basically trying to solve the equation 2x to the power of 5 minus x to the power of 4 plus 10x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4 equals to 0, right? Solution of this equation gives you the roots. Now, roots could be real or complex, right? So, in all, there are five roots. How do we figure out how many real roots, how many complex roots? In fact, the question here is to find out how many real positive roots? How many real negative roots? And then the remaining will be complex roots, correct? So that is kind of exercise which we are looking into. If we have an idea, in that case, we could have a shortcut method to solve this. Well, as you know, the possible roots could be what? Well, the possible roots could be factors of the constant minus 4 divided by the factors of 2, the leading coefficient, correct? So we know that the possible roots could be factors of 4, which are 1, 2, and 4, and factors of 2, which are 1 and 2. So dividing factors of 4 and by the factors of 2, we could actually get all the possible roots. In this particular case, we could have a root at plus or minus half, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, or plus or minus 4. That really means that we need to find the value of this function at these x values. Eight of them. It will take a lot of time. So we should have a way of finding which number should try first, right? That is what we'll look into. So let's see a very important rule to figure out the strategy. First thing first, you know, to find the roots of the polynomial, which is of degree n as given here, the possible roots are the ratio of the factors of the constant a0. So let me write a0 factors, the constant factors, divided by the leading coefficient factors, correct? So those are possible roots. Second, we know that the total number of roots of a polynomial of degree n is n. And also, complex roots exist in conjugate pairs only. That means we'll always have even number of complex roots, right? That is also important to understand. Now, whenever you want to find the roots of 
a polynomial, it is always good practice to write it in standard form. And that is to say that the term with the highest degree should be written first, right? So x to the power of n and the coefficient of that is called the leading coefficient. So when you go to the decreasing over order, then the last number will be a constant, which is written here as a0. Perfect. Well, some of you may also know the rule of sum, that is, sum of all the roots is the ratio of an minus 1 over an with a negative sign, where an is the leading coefficient, and adjacent to that, the next coefficient is a n minus 1. We also know that the product of roots is always a ratio of constant term over the leading coefficient. Now, its sign could be negative or positive. It is negative if the degree is odd and positive if the degree is even. Well, that is also helpful in solving such questions. The most important thing which we are going to discuss here is the Cartes rule, which tells us about the sign of positive and negative roots, right? So how do we apply this rule? And what is this rule? Let's look into this for a moment. Here is the polynomial of degree n written in proper order, where x belongs to complex number. Now, Polynomial should be written in standard form with non-zero terms in the decreasing power of single variable exponent. That is kind of very important to understand when we are talking about the Descartes rule. Now, if that is done, in that case, we can find how many positive rules can exist. The rule here is that the number of positive real rules of polynomial f of x is either equal to the number of sign changes between the consecutive coefficients or less than it by an even number. Correct? So it actually gives you an idea of what could be the maximum number of positive roots, right? If the number of sign changes are just one or zero, in that case, well, the number of positive roots will be one or zero, right? Now, we also have a rule which signifies the negative real rules. In that case, we are checking this change in sign of f of minus x. So the rule is that the number of negative real roots of the polynomial f of minus x is either equal to the number of sign changes between the consecutive coefficients or less than it by an even number. Why do we say even number? Because the complex roots are always in conjugate terms, right? Two complex roots in pairs, conjugate pairs. Now, <clears throat> knowing the Descartes rule helps us to figure out from where to try, which value to try, right? That's kind of important. And that is the shortcut method which we're talking about. So here is our function, which is 2x to the power of 5 minus x to the power of 4 plus 10x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4, where x belongs to complex number. Now, can you tell me the total number of roots which this polynomial can have? Well, clearly, the degree is 5, and therefore, it should have 5 roots, correct? Since the degree of this polynomial is 5. Now, out of these, what are the possible number of positive roots? How do we figure that out? Well, we said that we'll count the change in sign for the consecutive terms. Now, there is one change in sign here. When you go from degree 5 to degree 4 term, correct, then there's another change in sign. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So there could be 5 positive roots. Well, also less by 2 or 3 or 1 positive rules, correct? Maximum 5 positive rules are possible since there are 
five times the sign changes for the function f of x, correct? So that gives us an idea. Now let's figure out about the possible negative roots. Now for that, we need to write f of minus x and then figure out the change in sign. So as soon as you put x as minus x, the first term, which is odd term, will become 2x to the power of 5 with a negative sign. This remains as negative, correct? That term becomes negative 10x cubed. And then that remains, even term remains same sign. The odd term degree will actually change the sign. So what do you notice in this particular case? Clearly, there are no negative roots, correct? Since we do not have any change in sign for f of minus x, is that clear to you, right? That is f of minus x. And if you check the consecutive terms, all are negative, right? And therefore, there is no change in sign. Now, that gives you an idea that we should definitely start with the positive values only. Get the idea, right? So that means instead of eight of these values, the possible values of plus minus half, plus minus one, plus minus two, and plus minus four, we are now left with half, one, two, or four just four values to try. Do you see that? So we have eliminated four of the choices. Perfect. So let's begin with the very first one, which is half. So what are we going to do? We are going to substitute x equals to half, right, in the function f of x. So we'll try to find what is f of half, that is f when x equals to half. Substituting x equals to half in the equation and calculating, we get zero. That means x minus half is a factor, correct? That means that x minus half is a factor, or I could write this as 2x minus 1. That becomes one of the factors for the degree 5 polynomial we are looking into, correct? Now, how do we find the other factors? Well, you can do long division or synthetic division, correct? So I prefer to do synthetic division here. We know half is one of the roots, right? So, so what we do here is we write all the coefficients. So two, minus one, 10, minus five, eight, minus four are the coefficients of the function. We are going to divide by half, bringing down two, gives us 2 here. Now we multiply and write it here and add. So when you add, you get 0. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Half times 0 is 0. Adding 10, we get 10. And then multiplying and writing here, half of 10 is 5. Minus 5 plus 5 is 0. Multiplying by 0 gives you a 0. And then when you add with 8, you get 8. Half of 8 is 4. Minus 4 plus 4 is 0. As expected, the remainder is zero. Perfect. So what do we get here? We get the coefficients for a quartic equation, right? Now, so that becomes the coefficient of quartic equation. Since our actual factor is two times x minus half, we have to divide all these coefficients by two. So half of these values has been taken. And now, therefore, we can write the quartic equation as x to the power of 4, the cubic term is not there, the coefficient is 0, 5x squared, x term is not there, and we have the constant 4, 8 divided by 2, right? So you're going to further divide all these values by 2, correct? When you divide all these values by 2, you get 1, 0, 5, 0, 4, as the coefficients which are included in the second factor. So we have the factor x to the power of 4 plus 5x squared plus 4, right? And 2x minus 1, which originally we found. Perfect. So we have actually factored. Now, can you factor x to the power of 4 plus 5x squared plus 4? Well, that will give you complex roots, right? So 
we have got the solution in such a short period of time, correct? So we could write our function f of x as the product of 2x minus 1 into x to the power of 4 plus 5x squared plus 4, correct? Now this could be factored. Let me just write down the factors for the quartic equation x to the power of 4, 5x squared plus 4. Well, it's like a quadratic equation, right? Where we're looking for sum and product of 4. So we're looking for actually product of two terms as 4. And sum of these two terms should be 5. The numbers are 4 and 1. And therefore, we could write this quartic equation as product of x squared plus 4 times x squared plus 1. So these become the other factors. So we do have a factored form. And clearly, in this factored form, we have complex roots, right? So the roots for us are 1. We have half. And for x squared plus 1, what is the root? Let me rewrite here. x squared plus 1 equals to 0 implies that x is equals to plus minus i, correct? And x squared plus 4 equals to 0 implies that x is equals to plus minus 2i. Where, as you know, i square is equal to minus 1. That's the com complex number, right? So we do get the other factors. Four of these factors are actually complex. Only one positive real factor. Do you see that? Well, for benefit of most of our students who do not really understand complex numbers so well, I've written the factored form 2x minus 1 times x squared plus 4 times x squared plus 1. And for others who understand the factored form, they can actually write it as, we could write this function as, let me write f of x as equal to, 2x minus 1. Now this x squared plus 4, we know 2i is the factor of this. So it is x plus 2i times x minus 2i. And then we have x plus i times x minus i. So you can clearly see that we had this thought that the positive roots could be 5, 3, or 1. In this particular case, we got only one positive real root at x equals to half. All the other roots are the complex roots. And I hope in this example, you have also understood a strategy to factor a very complicated polynomial. The Cartier's rule actually help us to eliminate most of the possible factors and just focus on the ones which could be part of our solution. And that helps us to find a quick solution to such a difficult question. I hope it helps. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.